Hi, I'm Scott Kishball, and this is Karen Stainbrook. We're from the New York State DEC, Division of Water, and we're here to provide sampling instructions for the Citizen Statewide Lake Assessment Program. Uh, so I'm going to take Karen through all of the procedures for collecting a water sample, uh, and then we'll go through procedures a little bit later about how to process a water sample. The first step in the process, Karen, is to make sure that we have all the equipment that we need to go out on the boat. Um, so the first thing we want to make sure we have is a secchi disc. Uh, and so we'll pick that up and put it directly into a crate that we can bring out in the boat with us. Um, the second thing that we need is the camera bottle, which we're going to use to collect the water sample. So we'll place that in the crate as well. Then the water sample that's collected is going to be put into a collapsible container, which you can then put in the crate. Um, we're going to take a thermometer, which we have in a little box here. Uh, and also place that in the crate. Uh, and then just in case we encounter a harmful algal bloom, we want an algae bloom bottle and some gloves to protect yourself. Uh, we also wanna make sure that we have some paperwork that I have here with the clipboard um, that I'll take you through the procedures for filling out the paperwork a little bit later. Um, and we also wanna make sure that we, are, uh, we have PFDs on so that we uh, are um, first and foremost being safe when we go out and collect the samples. Uh, and then it's a good idea to bring an anchor out. So we'll put that in the boat with us as well and we have an anchor here. So uh, we'll load all the equipment into the boat, make sure that we have everything that we need. Um, a couple things to note before we go out and actually collect the sample. First is that uh, we're gonna be bringing out a couple pieces of paperwork. Um, one piece of paperwork called a sampling record um, and the other piece of paperwork that's called um, a field observation form, um, which is a two-sided form. If you fill out these forms, you do everything that you need to do out there. Um, but we also have all the instructions written very carefully in a sampling protocol that um, we also have in this binder and I would encourage you to take out every time you go out and collect a sample. So the sampling protocol provides the procedures um, that we're going to follow to make sure that we're doing everything right. But um, sort of as a rule of thumb, if you fill out the paperwork, fill out all of the paper pieces of paperwork, you're doing everything that you need to do um, when you're out there in the water. So if you're ready, let's go out. Okay. If you've never been collecting a sea slap sample, if this is the first time you've gone out, uh, then you might need to scout around and find where the deepest part of the lake is. Um, fortunately, we know that the deepest part of the lake is right out here. Once we get out there, we're gonna look for four landmarks along the shoreline to make sure that we're at the right location. Okay, so I think this is about the deepest part of the lake. And the first time we came out and we determined the deepest location, we looked for four landmarks along the shoreline. The first one was this white house right here. And then we looked to see this tall tree right here. And we connected the straight line along this way. Then we looked at the tree that's sticking out yep. right over here. And straight behind us was the very edge of the lake right over here. So those four landmarks you go to each time um, that you come out and collect a sample, verify that you're at the right location, and then you lower your anchor. You'll want to leave a little extra line just to make sure that if there's a little bit of wind that you don't get dislodged from the sampling location. And you'll want to tie that off. I'll do that right up here. Okay, so we've anchored the boat down, and we're now ready to go through the sampling procedures. So there are four sections to the sampling record. The first section is writing the name of the lake, the county in which the lake is located, um, and we write the county because sometimes there are multiple lakes sharing the same name and we want to make sure we can distinguish those. The date um, in which we're collecting the sample, and the names of the samplers. So I'll fill out that information right now. As I'm writing that information down, the, the last step in section one is the sounding depth. The sounding depth is the depth of the lake where you're doing all of your sampling. So that's the depth of the lake at this location. So we'll show you the procedure for using the Secchi disc to do the um, sounding depth measurement. So you'll take the Secchi disc and you're going to lower it over the side of the boat until it sits down on the bottom. And then you'll record that depth. Now you'll see um, the Secchi disc line has uh, several different kinds of markings. It has red numbers that correspond to um, the approximate depth of the lake in meters. So we'll see that the line there says um, somewhere around three meters. And then 
the large numbers, 10, 20, 30, and so on, are tenths of a measurement. We want to record this to the nearest tenth. And so what's the, the depth measurement you're getting? 3.1. So 3.1 meters. So we'll write that down. Um, and we'll want to make sure that that sounding depth measurement is within about 10% of what we know the maximum depth is. So that's the case here. So we have the correct sounding depth.